Hey everyone, this is Luminous coming to you guys with game number three of the best of three series between Nirvana China and IG.Y. This is 40 How Fun Golden League, and uh, so far it has been a pretty good game. Uh, game number one, if you missed it, it was Nirvana China just winning purely because of later, later game strat. I felt like IG.Y wasn't aggressive enough with the earlier game strat in that lineup. Game number two, YG that Y saw some really, really nice aggression catching Nirvana and Chinese pandas a cooldown and then just went straight for it, got themselves two clean Rax kills uh, off one big push and then they just basically played out the game. So let's let's see. I think Nirvana China uh, excuse me, I think IG that Y is a better of two team in my opinion here. It's their game to win or it's their game to lose, in my opinion. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, though, because these two game, uh, these two teams still are very evenly matched. As you know, both these teams qualify for WDC, which is happening how when when a week exactly a week from today. So that is going to be nice. And it looks like we have Shaker and Invoker being banned, Shadow Demon and the Puck being banned. Finally, Puck making to a ban phase because he's just instrumental in these two games. Uh, whether he won or lost, I think he won both games. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, I think Puck won both games today. Just really, really strong hero overall. Very versatile in terms of laning. Very versatile in terms of how you want to initiate. You can play defensive with them. You can play offensive with them. So, really nice. Uh, but with the Puck being in the ban pool, we have some really nice heroes uh, left to pick. Bad Rider is one. Lich is one. Um, Ancient Apparition, not so much. Not so much Ancient Apparition. Those two heroes can be banned. Bad Rider, uh, excuse me, Broodmother is still in the pool as well. Looks like we are going to ban the, the Pugna. Okay. So, looks like Nirvana China was uh, having a little bit of nightmare about that last game. What where the Pugna, even though he only have a thousand HP, he got really tanked because he got Mecha, um, he got Arcane Boots at bottle, and then he got BKB at the end, which was, you know, somewhat of effective pounder to whatever the search could throw at them. Looks like we're gonna open up with Lich Pick, and right off the bat, Windrunner Lycan. This was a fair familiar opening that I think IG that Y picked earlier today, or was it Nirvana China? Someone did. With the Windrunner like an opening, very quick, very mobile team. And uh, why is IG.Y playing on Scourge today? Shouldn't they have swapped? And if you're wondering, does that matter? It does. Sentinel and Scourge like actually really, really two different sides of the map. Uh, especially when you have uh, you give Lycan on the Scourge side, like Roshan, it's going to be absolutely easy for him. You could basically smoke in. Sometimes you walk in. Uh, here, I'll, I'll show you guys right here. Bring up the menu. Um, like if Sentinel Ward's right here, as a, as a Scourge hero, you could basically just hug this path. You could literally hug it and you could walk straight into a Roshan pit. And Sentinel would never see it if they ward here. Now if they ward here, it's a, it's a different story. But most Sentinel, they don't want to go across the river because you don't know what the hell's out there. As a support, you just ward, usually you just ward on this side. So that's that's something to be on concern. And that's why I was like, hmm, shouldn't they swap side because, oops, shouldn't they swap side because Scourge... Giving Lycan Scourge twice on uh, IG.Y might be unfair. I, I personally think Scourge has better game advantage. Of course, Sentinel is the better, you know, prettier side of the map. It's, you know, Scourge looks fugly. But, uh, you know, people don't care about how, how the map looks when they can win the game. As we see, uh, Nirvana China are taking a little bit of time in terms of how they want to push. Okay, Panda into the pool, of course. Solar Bears in the pool. They, that's exactly what they did last game. They go for something else again. Uh, Scourge could actually just pick the exact same lineup as they did last game. I, I think that was a rather beautiful lineup. Although hopefully they don't put Shurigan on the Weaver again. As much as they love him, I love him for his awesome support play. Semi-carry rolls. Not so much for that 20 minute 60 CS Weaver. Who had basically free farm by the way. Let you know. Uh, we're going to see a Brew Mother and the Clockwork being picked up here. I Right off the bat I don't like these two picks. Because they don't work well with each other. Um... Uh, they're okay. They're okay. Uh, the reason I say they don't walk well with each other is because the cock really mess up the sli spider. Of course, you can't attack it without destroying the cock. But then you're wasting a couple of attacks here. So we see IG.Y exactly picking this exact same picks as last game. Um, but I was like, the reason I was like, ah, uh, maybe they're okay. And the reason I, I had that kind of elapse of taking back what I just said was, well, if you think about it, Bruma is going to play playing by himself. He literally will be playing by himself the whole game. So... You know, Cog won't really affect him that much until like you know the end game team fights, and also don't really like Brood being picked here is because Lycanthrope says I don't care about Brood at all. Um, now even with the life steal, even with the orb from 
the incapitating bite, whatever that orb is called from the broodmother, it gives you 25% mischance to whoever, whoever he's attacking. So that can be good against some carries, but BKB is going to take care of that problem. Lifesteal is not going to out lifesteal the quick attack speed of the Lycanthrope and the, you know, Vlad lifesteal. So in terms of 1v1 matchup, the Broodmother is not going to be able to handle the, the Lycanthrope. I'm questioning whether it's going to go Orchid first to counter that Weaver, or it's going to go BKB. I think Orchid first is probably better because BKB does nothing against the Scourge lineup right now. It's not, it's not going to stop the right click um, from the Lycan and the Weaver. So I think Orchid is going to be his item of choice here. Now, we do see Panda being banned by the IG. Why well, do you realize how strong that hero is, especially in very timely team fights? We do have Champ being banned on the Scourge and, uh, on Sentinel end. Um, I wonder what is the secondary carry for Nirvana and China's because I've never seen them go a solo carry. Never. They always go double carry. Uh, that's kind of the way of playing it right now. So, Brutus is one of them. They can go anti mage. But with anti mage and brood, you really, really, really hope IG.Y don't push. And I think IG.Y will push with the Lycan and Weaver. So they can't go anti mage, in my opinion. They cannot go Spectre, in my opinion, because those, those carries are just too late. I think they have to go for another semi carries that ramp up really quickly. But honestly, who is left in the pool that ramps up very quickly um, that could even match the Lycan throw? I don't think there's anyone left in the pool that could do that. So. Nirvana China not opening up to the best picking phase, in my opinion, as we see the anti mage being banned and Witch Doctor being banned, respectively, on both sides. Nirvana checking in time, they only got about 50 seconds left. And then they need to drink some water. You know what would be interesting here? If they pick up a Coropulus. I've never seen the Chinese players play Acropolis, but I would think it would be really good, especially if you let's say you get a ghost up there. Destroyer still in the pool, that wouldn't be bad actually. Yeah, Acropolis. I that's just me like purely fan fanboy deer crafting, but I think Acropolis overall is just a really underrated, underpicked hero. I'm pre I'm I'm almost on ninety nine percent sure they won't pick Acropolis, but just because just I want to talk about Acropolis, Acropolis is a really nice hero. You pick up Ghost Scepter, his ghost will just do a lot of damage. You go for all survival items. It's going to be a line, okay? Is it going to be a solo mid line? I will be. I'll be getting quite excited if it is. And look, looking at the leaning, it might be possible. Yeah, it looks like they don't have a solo mid just yet, so it might just be solo mid line. I love solo mid line, man. Back in the days of Ehome X, it just blew my mind. Do they have any good line players? Let me give a quick check. I guess you could be Sea King. Yeah, Sea King is a def a definitely a pretty good Lion player, I assume. So that's what they could do. Um, well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if actually they actually put this Lion mid. Uh, Lion support on the side lane? Not bad either. Um, really, I, I feel like Lion's uh, underrated support in most cases. Um, th there's Crystal Maiden in the pool. There's Venge in the pool, but they're not picking those. So I'm assuming they're picking this Lion for solo mid. If they're picking him as a support, then hmm, you know, there's maybe better supports left in the pool. We'll have to see. I just thought why maybe a little bit baffled as well with like, ooh, what is this lion pick? Lion will wreck us pretty good. So they're gonna answer back with Beastmaster themselves. Not a bad way to go about it. Beastmaster with a four second stun. You have to hawk to see if the lion is nearby in vicinity. What is more important is that you're denying the pick to the Scourge team. Uh, to the Sentinel team. Ooh, Nirvana, China. Busting out the the symbolic creature of Chinese, which is the mother effing dragon, of course. And now, now with this in mind, we're gonna do a tri lane of Lion DK Lich, Clock Solo, and a Brood. Yeah, that seems like it. But tri lane against Weaver never really works, considering if you have a freaking like 150 range on your dragon tail. Now, of course, you're not going to initiate with a dragon tail. You have your Nova, you have your Hexes, you have your Impale to set up for you, but still. Alright, it's going to be a Dragonite. Dragonite, really, really cool hero, in my opinion. Doesn't get enough picked. And let's see how it's going to be going against the uh, Lycanthrope of this game. I still believe 1v1 engagement, the Lycanthrope will outcarry the Dragonite. Um, Dragonite is very tanky, you know, between Dragon Blood and his ha high natural armor growth. Uh, he can tank up quite a bit. Unfortunately, there's a 4 second roar waiting on him for him on the other end. 
If you're, he ever gets level 16 and some item on that dragon, it could be very decent. As we see, Crystal Maiden going to be the last pick here for the Scourge, and we are going to pause because people need to do stuff, I assume. Let's look at the Scourge landing. We're definitely going to see... <laughs> okay, for the third time of this game, I was like, okay, we're going to see Beastmaster mid, which I'm pretty sure of. The Weaver CM bot, Windman on top, and like in the jungle. But of course, IG.Y is going to put Lycan on the top solo and the Trilane bot. If, if they do put a Trilane versus Trilane, that, that would be a very interesting lane to watch. And then if, But the thing is, Nirvana China definitely laned the clockwork against the Lycan throw today. Or was it the other way around where IG.Y laned, laned the clockwork against Lycan and the, and the clock just got no farm and the Lycan had insane amount of farm. So if that's the laning pairing that ends up to be, then the Lycan will have a huge advantage. I guess they could lane the Brood. Yeah, they are going to lane Brood top, I think. And then they're going to lane the Clock mid. Against the Beastmaster. That wouldn't be bad. Oh, we'll have to wait and see. I'm making all these guesses, and I'm sure all these guesses are wrong. Uh, maybe they'll just do a, you know, roaming DK a la Ehom style. That would be cool, too. Here we go. Let's look at who's playing what on the Scourge side. We have CH on that. Windrunner are going to be support Windrunner again because the CH playing it. So uh, it's going to be like in solo top as we see YYF on him. Uh, Sherrigan on the Weaver again. Lovely. We're going to see some 20 minute 60 CS. Now let's hopefully he gets a little bit better. And it's 8.30 on that Crystal Maiden and Beastmaster being played by Tron. Tron playing some very nice little mid today. Uh, meanwhile on the, on the Sentinel we have L to care play on the uh, Broodmother. DK being played by Seeking. And then we have Lich being played by Banana, uh, Clockwork being handled by King J, and now we have Lion Solo Bot being played by Gui. Uh, is this a little bot? He has a pair of Sentry Wards on him. Mm. And he has spent all his gold, so it looks like he's just warding, counter warding, not too sure. I hope these guys are going just to war top, and not in fact going top. These guys are really confusing in terms of laning. I have no idea what they want to do. Well, I know Broodmother is going to go on one of the side lanes. In fact, that he's web seer, I'm going to say he's going to go on the top side lane for sure. And the reason that I know he's going to the side lane is because he has a soul ring recipe. So that means he's going to get upgraded soul ring. Of course, you can only buy these on the secret shop. Sure, you could buy it from the chicken. Very unlikely he's going to do so. And just as I say that, Broodmother says, Yo, bro, I'm going to bot. Okay. Looks like it is going to be a haste claim by the Crystal Maiden on, this, on the bot. Are they dual laning? Alright, Clock Solo mid, Lich DK top, and they're gonna dual lane the Lion bot. This is something- Oh, you know what they're gonna do? I realize what they're gonna do. They're gonna dual lane it up a little bit, and then they're gonna jungle with the Lion. Yes, they're gonna jungle with the Lion with Spiderlings. I'm sure of it. No reason why he would've got Sentry Wards. He's gonna block- he's trying to uh, counter ward against camps. And then he's gonna go jungle. After level 2-3. He's, he's gonna do it right now. There we go. Nice. Alright, so Broodmother, gonna get a quick level 2 or 3 and s start using those Spiderlings uh, to get himself, you know, a couple more creeps and, and whatnot. But it looks like Windrunner and Crystal Maiden doing a very fine job in terms of harassing her down. Uh, Crystal Maiden and Windrunner, not a bad of a lane. Uh, they're definitely not gonna get killed by the Broodmother, so... A lot of slow to help out in that regard. Lich doing really nicely, harassing in the jungle, wow. Uh, generally you don't see Lich, Lich is one of those heroes that you expect her to be in the lane. And because she has such a strong laning skill, right, Dark Ritual? But looks like DK says, I'm fine against a Weaver solo. Uh, just come back once in a while to deny a Creeper too. Just go harass a Lycan, which I f and find. Hey, look at him. Warding off the left one cam. Lich says, yo, bro. Get off my, yo get off your jungle, bro. And uh, here we go. We're going to have some Spiderlings being sent to the jungle. Uh, being sent. I wonder if he's going to share control with the Lion. And be like, jungling together. Like best buddies. Actually, with the line position, they can actually get a kill on the Crystal Maiden. If the Crystal Maiden gets not careful enough, because these Spiderlings actually slows pretty well. Um, maybe not level 1, but they, they do slow pretty decently, so... Looks like, uh... L just not, not micro his Broodmother, sending him away, you know, it's no big deal. And also, uh, when you're denying, you get uh, those Spiderlings as well, as uh, we just saw there. Gonna make that Spiderling army, gonna get himself 3. Um, I think he's gonna wait to maybe level 2, 3 to go in the jungle, and, yeah, deny that... Sentry Ward, oh come on, come on, couple more hits. They're gonna get it, so that's fine. This Crystal Maiden has one, and Windrunner has one, and one more, so no big deal. She's gonna just pop one down and just go for a Sentry Ward Ward. Sentry Ward War. Is that right? Yeah, English is a tough language. As on t top lane here, we have DK at 8 and 2, Weaver 
pro farming Shurigan on a 4 and 1, 4 and 0. And uh, the, uh, that Weaver's gonna com get completely outlaned, as we see Dark Ritual used every off every time he's off cooldown. I wonder if he's gonna level Dark Ritual at level three and just right you know prioritize a lot on the deny, or he's gonna go for he's gonna go for Nova at level three. We'll have to wait and see as we see mid lane a little bit more engagement. Clockwork got a lot of harass against Tron. Tron has the Invis rune, so he's not worried at all here. He does pop the Invis right now, and he should be absolutely fine. He's gonna wait for this last hit. Not gonna get it, and uh, gonna go back and bottle up. Both guys have their bottle, but uh, it looks like the skirt, it looks like the Beastmaster will have better lane control considering that he has Hawk. Uh, but lately, we've been seeing more and more Beastmaster player actually prefer the Aura and actually skipping Hawk altogether. Not in this game, looks like he just uh, get the Hawk. Like, you gotta be microing the Hawk a little bit better, Tron. Come on, my friend. Uh, gets completely denied and lose that gold there. But uh, no big deal. As he's doing a fairly good job in terms of pushing the wave, and again, solo minute is always important about pushing the wave at a correct time, which is right about now. You want to sp start spamming your AoE spells. And there we go, looks like both, it uh, looks like at least the Beastmaster dropping that Axis. Clockwork using that battery itself very liberally, trying to get something going here, but he's actually taking quite a bit of damage. He does, he does have a stout shield, so he should be fine. And the rune is going to be spawning, it looks like he needs to salve up very quickly. Gotta be careful of that Axis. Axis should still be on cooldown though. Clockwork very low on the mana as well. This is going to be a very tame laning stage, because no one side is going to kill each other. Aside from the bot lane, um, I'm going to, after a wait to see... Ooh, nice, killing that bird, denying that scouting advantage. Uh, does he have a rune himself? Uh, does he have a ward himself? No, he doesn't. So, Clockwork playing blind in a slow mid position, and it's going to spawn on the bot lane. Looks like Beastmaster does see it with his own wards, and it's going to be grabbing it right there. Yeah, Sentinel playing without any observer wards. This is this is some next level tactics. I haven't seen this one for a long time. In fact, they're placing the observer ward block level 1 camps. And, and this camp, apparently, but... I think Clockwork would have loved to have a ward in the mid lane here. And Vizrune gets uh, picked up by the Beastmaster. Boots of Speed and Clock uh, and the Magic, Magic Wand being picked up as well. So you see First Blood going to bot lane. I knew it was going to happen there. I knew it. I'm sorry, guys. How did how did Broodmother die? Just get harassed down by a good Shackle Shot and, and stuff or what? I, I guess that's the case. But Lion says, alright, free EXP for me. Don't TP back in the lane, man. Just walk. Just walk. Give me some EXP. And Lion would really need to use the XP's out of restorative at this point. Actually, he is in peril because a Nova, a Freeze Bite, and a Shaco would just bring him down. Looks like we do have a teleportation coming back from the Broodmother. And this strat not working out all too nicely. He's going to go for a stack pull, I presume. Yes, he's stacking right now. And uh, going to pull the next wave, deny a lot of uh, CS. Looks like Broodmother all over the place. But these webs are just killing him right now. Like... Or not webs, these uh these sentry wars are just really messing him up. Trying to get some uh, denies and last going. He does have a soul ring, which is gonna just in the long run will allow him to control the lane, but right now he's really worried about that. As we see maybe a lot of jungling going on. Let's go, yes, micro spiderlings. And this is exactly what they wanted. Probably not the best start they had in mind, but you know. Is Lion gonna give the creeps to Nope. I think Lion yeah, Lion tried last or what? I, I can't tell. Seems like he's just all doing. Yeah, some some teams just do this strategy. But they they only uh, yeah they give the last hit to the brew mother, and uh, they they have the line just to get the exp. We want the top lane here. It looks like Weaver are gonna go down nicely done uh, with Central War down Nova into a Dragon Tail. Yep. And you're wondering why why did Weaver get hit by the Dragon Tail? Dragon Tail is such low range. Well, I don't think the Weaver was suspecting it. They were just laning left and right as we see. And how many kills I missed this game? There's three kills and I missed all three. Okay. Uh, the reason that Weaver got killed on the top lane is well, they were basically trading punches. Um, you know, for the f past five minutes, and I pr probably he got surprised by a DK Dragon Tail and be like, "Oh, shoot, L Lich is here as well." And they basically right click him down death. So we're very well done there. So I'm not gonna miss any kills anymore, for sure, for sure. Try hard mode being turned on. Broodmother level six, and uh, Windrunner. Let me see how she's doing. Le level six as well. So fairly even in terms of level. And another pair of Century War. Man, a lot of gold investment being dropped on this lane. But it's worth it as we see a kill on the mid lane not being missed. Yeah. I didn't even see the beginning of it, that's fine. This roar, you guys could use your beautiful imaginations. It was roar, like a wolf, right clicks, and wow, clockwork! King J a little bit mad. You think he's a little bit mayo? I think he's a little bit mayo. Vice back. Maybe it's worth it, considering that it's such a low cost. Probably it was like 250 gold, maybe 300 gold. TP scroll, 435, if you add it all up together. There was the entire wave, so he could have made half the cost back. And he got himself a lot of critical EXP. Maybe 
trying to justify for his rageness. Probably still not worth it, but it's okay. It's okay. We want the top lane here. DK 30 and 9 compared to Shuriken 16 and 2, so getting already doubled upon his CS and DK. What is he going for? Is he going to go for tank TK? Looks like he's got a soul ring, so spamming that fire breath. Because he can, because he's boss. Look at him. Look at him. Oh man. We've are hurting. We've are hurting right now. Women are in position to drop off a couple of wards. Gonna look for the line. He knows the line is in the jungle. Uh blocking off the pool. Nice, nice, nice. Man, these guys are this has to be like the third pair of wards. Uh, just on the bot lane. Two cent two pairs of sentries, one pair of observer ward. No, they actually use a pair of observer in the beginning to block off the camp as well. So that's like eight hundred gold just on ward right now and spiderlings coming be ganking. Gotta be very careful. And this is this is the nice thing about playing this strategy, because you don't know if these guys are jungling or they're ganking your crystal man. And this is it's like it's like pass it's like double jungle except using one hero. So he's getting a level there as well. I Meanwhile on the top lane here we have DK still lasting in the up. 39 CS, gonna go for power threats, I presume. As we see Beastmaster in position right now, nice, nice wolf blocking, gonna work on the Lich right now. Lich gonna go down, yes he will, unfortunately. Lich did not pick Frost Armor, I actually might have picked Frost Armor level 4, or maybe even level 5, just skip the level of Nova, because never know when those wolves are coming. Against the Lycan Wolf, not bad, not a bad idea to get early levels of the, um, of the Frost Armor, but... It's okay, it's okay. As we see, D uh, double damage on the Crystal Maiden. Got a magic stick and have three uh, 360 gold. Not to the boots of speed yet. And uh, yeah, <laughs> counter warding like bosses. Like boss. And uh, immediate counter ward being dropped down. No, that, this ward was dropped down earlier. But at the very least, it got this ward. So it was good enough here. And we have a smoked up Lich trying to hit level 6. Yeah, I think he's waiting for that level 6. And uh, once he get level 6, Got some chain frost action plus a dragon tail. But unfortunately, I think the weaver is no weaver's not six yet. So they could still make this happen. Yeah, Lich is gonna turn six right after this. So they could just go right now, right in the face, and the face of that weaver before he turns six. Man, is he gonna hide back? Is he gonna hide back? Looks like he's hiding back. DK going ever so closely. No, Lich coming in right now. There's a yeah, there. Bam! Oh, magic one turns out it's a good item. Lich, man, don't oh. King J, never mind. King just right there gets a kill. I was gonna say, man, don't don't be don't be cheap with your uh, with your frost chain frost. Just throw it out, man. It's worth the kill on the weaver. But King J was there to mop up. Nicely done. He does have the arcane boot finish. No vanguard just yet. That is gonna be his next item choice against so many physical right clickers. Not a bad choice, as you see. Mid tower being sieged upon. The King J is trying to get in position against something happened. Beastmaster or already picked up. So skipping the final level of that hawk, I believe. They call it wild. Because level 3 is the most important level, giving that like, the greater hawk. Uh, so you could skip your level 4 call of wild for a little bit. And it uh, looks like on the bottom here we have Broodmother who's got 30, 39 and 16. I will check how much neutral he's got. Let's see, Broodmother, Broodmother, Broodmother has got... How much neutrals? Can't even find it. 11, okay. Lion's got 8, okay. So there's just splitting up, no big deal. I was sinking feeling. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought, I thought, uh, I thought I was like on on that Charizard cover or something, and I was like, casting a game that you guys aren't even seeing. But never mind, everything's good. All right, let's check out how everyone's doing some farm. As we see, Hastry on the Beastmaster gonna most likely be ganking that bot lane. But little does he know, we have invisible, not invisible. We have a witch doctor just hiding, just hiding. Do they have dust? Is the question. They don't have dust. They don't have any stench rewards. Beastmaster. Nope, they don't have anything. So how are you how are you gonna gank this broodmother is the question. I don't think they can. No, there's a sentry war being purchased by CH, and it looks like they are gonna be sending it all the way to Botling. Beastmaster being very patient right now. Yep. And it looks like women are being harassed back a little bit. No big deal. She's got the regen for her home soul ring. On the top lane here, we have Lycan Wolf still farming it up, and finally a jungle Lycan. We see it like the what was that first time today? We see a jungle Lycan, and. Uh, you know, he's got he's got his aim in advance. He's working on his medallion courage. In fact, got harassed down a little bit by that lich. The lich is dropping a single war and was denying a lot. Hastrin is pop, smoke and seed is there as well. Broodmother not long for life. A sentry war gonna be immediately dropped. Yes indeed, they're making sure that Broodmother is still here. Yes they are. Sees a broodmother right clicking. Oh, pretty nice. Lag spike. Waiting, they're waiting, very patient. I'm being very patient as well. Come on, Smoke DC is going to be running out. Okay, Wimran is going to just go for the line now. 
Alright, he's gonna find the lion, smoke the sea, get revealed. Impale? Well, that was a lot of... They get, they got a, they got a lich kill. But, uh, ooh, Brimada doing some nice blocking. He's using a spider wings to attack using the hero to block. I, I, I think it should be the other way around, but that's, that's fine. As you see, uh, they got a kill on the Lich. Chain Frost almost killed the uh, Lycanthrope, but that's fine. I'm, I wonder why they didn't go on the Broodmother. Uh, of course, Broodmother would, what, level 4 web? I presume, yeah, level 4 web. You have like 80% increase in movement speed, like something ridiculous. I think his movement speed right now is like 480 or something like that. So if you don't kill him with your Chain Stun, you're not going to kill him. And unfortunately, I don't think they could have killed him with a Chain Stun. The roar right now is, what, 2.5 seconds long? Maybe 3? Three? 3 seconds long at level 1. Um... And I don't think there was many valid targets where he had a shackle shot off of. So they definitely would have, have uh, killed the Broodmother. So I was like, you know what, we're not going to just kill, so let's go for something else. And they did find this massive amount of counter warding going on right now. This, You know what this reminds me? This is like 1984 Big Brothers watching you kind of stuff. Like, And considering that this is what, in a Chinese game, that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, it all makes sense. Whole bunch of wars. <laughs> like, man, how many wars? I, I'm just going to do a quick war check. I've never done this in my life before. A war check. 13 minutes in. So we got what, 6 wards on the Windrunner, 6 wards on the Crystal Maiden, that's 12. Another 12 on the other end, man, this is freaking insane. Uh, but okay. But Windrunner farming the bot lane just to buy wards, he is gonna be in trouble as we see Lion coming right now. Can he get enough to get a hex? The Windrunner pops off, and here we go. Ooh, nice hex to prevent that roar, but he is gonna go down regardless. Are they gonna use a ward? Looks like they're not gonna do so. Axis chops off the head of that lion, and uh, he is gonna hang that up in his living room today. But uh, Beastmaster is going to try to get that push going on. He does have the aura at level 2, I presume. Mm, level 1 just right now. Here comes the Lycan Wolf. Here comes the Windrunner and the CM. And they're going to get a tower pushed off. It is always a pretty good idea to... Well, it's, it's a decent idea to push the lane against the Broodmother. Um, Sun 1-5, which is, used to be the professional player for DC Com Dota. He told me this once, and he was... They're, uh, of course, the Broodmother player. He told me this once. It's always dangerous to push Broodmother's lane. It's always good if you get the push off, but it's always dangerous. And the reason it's dangerous is because Broodmother's lanes generally have webs all over the place. If there's a team fight ensuing, you're you're basically going to say, okay, if we, we're losing the team fight, all of our heroes are basically dead. Again, the Broodmother is moving around with like 480 movement speed. He will catch up to everyone, and he will just kill everyone. And that's why it's always dangerous to team fight under Broodmother's webs. But um, that was a 4v1 push. That was a for sure thing. And the good thing about pushing off Broodmother's lane is, well, he's, well, I guess the good thing is you give him, I, I don't want to say you give him more room to farm. He gets ganked a lot easier because, I don't know, there's more ganking path, I want to say this. A smoke in, a dust, a kill. It's, it's a lot easier if he doesn't have a tower to run to. But in either case, he's still have 480% movement speed. That's why I was like, I'm not really sure whether it's a good idea to push Broodmother's lane all together. But they, get, they got themselves a free tower kill, they got themselves a free Aegis kill, so it's fine. We on the top lane here, we have Lich uh, smoked up level 8. Can they get the chain stun up on the Weaver? That is the question, as we see many TPs in right now, two or three TPs in right now, there's a swarm against TK, he's got a lot of armor, he doesn't really care right now, but if the Beastmaster roar, he will care, Chain Frost being dropped right now, here comes the rocket, do they, oh, they're gonna find a Weaver, there's the, they are gonna get the Weaver for sure, they don't even need a Finger of Death, and here we go, there's nice hook in against the Windrunner, Windrunner's gonna go down, there's a Finger of Death, King J showing her what's up, uh, that was pretty wrong, yeah, that was pretty wrong, but uh, they got a tower themselves, double kill goes to King J, uh, but here comes the CM. And the Lycan Wolf. Lycan Wolf getting complete chain stun right now. He's getting really nuked down. Really nice cog by King J. The nice Aegis. Is he going to make it out of life? Yes, he will. DK in position to kind of go against. Oh, he's really low. Looks like the Wolf is going to pick up a kill. YYF gets a double kill right now. And here comes the Lion. Lion got to be careful. <laughs> Look at those Wolf. Critting like crazy. Medallion Curse being popped on him. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine right now. Very, very low HP. Where was the DK? TK just TP him. What is the item correction? Looks like he's going to go for Vanguard Pipe. Awesome hero, boring item choices, but I think that's that's good. It's just just logical item choice. Do you need a hood? I guess you do need a hood. Um, do you need a pipe? They have axes. They have Nova. Uh, I'm not sure if you need a pipe. Not sure if you need a pipe because they have a lot of right click power. I think it's better off if you just go for armor HP. Um, not so much magical uh, immunity. Let's see if he's going to upgrade it. And is he going to level that DK form to level 2? No, he, he's not. And the reason that you don't really want to level DK form to level 2 is that 
DK form level 1 is generally considered better. Um, sure, there's a nice splash damage, but mostly you want it for tower pushing the corrosive damage it works against towers and also gives you that sl slow I think slow is more important than a splash hit especially when you're really doing damage team fight you're doing more for a little bit more sm small s small scale engagement where chasing matters so I, I do like the fact that he's uh, leveling up stats instead of DK form level 2 so that's logical build of course so we see Weaver on the bot lane Shuriken, Shuriken farm check oh 43 creep kills in 18 minutes now, granted, this time he did have a tough lane. He was leaning against DK and Lich, you know, Lich did constantly denying, and, uh, you know, but still. So, I think, like, this is not too good a farm, if you ask me. Meanwhile, looking in the mid lane here, we have line, just a boot of speed and a bracer. Very, very poor. Um, apparently, that, that jungling with the broodmother didn't really work out. He got the level, though. Very critically, he got level 8.5, and, and that's important. Uh, but, unfortunately, though, not too much gold to work on DK. Uh, still having no item progression, he's got a thousand gold. So, is he gonna upgrade the? Gonna bring get a ring of health right now? That's gonna be an indication of the hood, or is he gonna, you know, get some cool item like a like an ogre axe for a BKB? I don't think BKB would be a good item either. Again, for the same fact that there's there's not ma much magical damage. They don't need magical immunity. You need armor. So, AC rush on DK wouldn't be bad. Blade mail. Mm. I, I'm actually quite curious what item he will be end up getting because what will you get in this situation? I'm not too sure. Scourge ready to smoke up. Ooh, this is uh, this is the kind of signature of, of Chinese Beastmasters. Pick out that gem, go for a lot of deny, uh, a lot of uh, war kills because you can. I wonder if, if they looked at the river right now, they would have saw a smoked up Windrunner walking by. If they looked at the mini map, they would not have seen anything. And considering that no one's moving back right now, this brood mother, uh oh, gem against the brood. Where's the roar? Come on, oh my god, Chuan. Wake up, Chuan. Weaver's in position to scout him out, though. Brood mother, 480 movement speed, just spider manning it up right now. Look at him. It's like, woo, choo choo, train running through. Yep. That, that was. Not gonna lie. That was, oh, he's out. It's, oh, shoot. It's, oh, shoot. Dude, <laughs> look at. <laughs> but there's a team fight going on right now here as DK leads the charge. He gets oh now this clockwork's gonna be lead the charge. There's a dragon form level two. Okay, he's used it there. Oh, he's gonna get roared though. Who's he's roaring? He's roaring the clockwork. Clockwork gets roared down, and now the DK out of position right now. He's gonna get chased down as well. Very very low HP here. Can can the lion form come out? No, the lion can't do too much. Looks like lion might be going down as well. Shackle shot against the brew mother right now. IG die. Why? Team wipe. Five man team wipe. I gotta say that was a horrible team fight. Not because, of course, they got well, they got team wipe. Of course, it was a horrible fight for Sentinel. But the way they started the fight, not too sure. I think I think it was Sentinel that initiated it. But DK was like right here, or the Brumman was right here. He was going like a trip around the world or something, and and clocked hooked in, and and that was confusing because because the. The Lich was, I didn't even see the Lich in the fight, he just died before he dropped the Chain Frost, I presume Lion was right, right here, DK was right here, and like, yeah, position, I have never seen Nirvana China have such bad positioning. I assume it was Nirvana China that started the fight, because what initiation Scourge have? The roar was used when the clock was right there, so I'm assuming, yeah, I'm not too sure what that fight was about, but Scourge in a huge advantage right now, 5 and 2, they had the Aegis too. They still have the Aegis. No, they didn't. Or maybe they killed the Lycan. Is that it? They killed the Lycan. And then the team fight happened. Maybe that was it. <clears throat> the result was not beautiful, though. So, all right. Let, let's see what the item choices of the Sentinel. I'm, I'm curious what DK will get, what the Brew will get. It's going to be a BKB, which I'm not too sure. Because there's a Roar, and BKB is not going to help you against right clicks. Not going to help you against right clicks. Not going to help you against right clicks. Alright, Weaver's gonna go for Vitality Hood, very standard lineup, <clears throat> standard here, uh, build. Probably gonna go for Strength Shred as well, in fact, I don't expect Shuriken to do anything this game. Um, and so far, he really hasn't been doing anything. Um, he's got, what, 1, 3, and a couple of assists? 1, 3, and 3? Yeah, he hasn't been doing anything at all, in my opinion. So, not not too sure why they have Shuriken again to play that. <clears throat> but that's fine, because his team is doing well, and it's a team game, guys, so... It's all right, because we see Beastmaster very, very tanky like this, 1500 HP, and and he realized that he has to be in the front. Um, he you don't want to send your uh, your like in the front, and he will have the HP to do it, but you don't want to send him to do it because you don't want him to tank that initial barrage of spell. Instead, you want the Beastmaster to tank it because after the roar, 
the the enemy team don't have the incentive to focus him anymore because you know do you want to focus a beastmaster after he used the roar especially when he, when he had 1500 hp so that means he could be able to tank the initial barrage spells drop off his roar still be in a team fight to drop off his axes to have his teammates to benefit from the enemy beast aura um, so he's really really tanky um, i'm surprised that he didn't go for vanguard because that would have accomplished the 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 thing a lot better but hey he's gonna go for probably arcane after this and that should be fine as we see DK picks up a playmail, which I believe this is the correct item choice here. A lot of armor here. 30 armor on that DK. And that just basically says, yo bro, you're going to try right clicking me? It's not going to work out. So let's see how the Scourge is going to respond. I, I'm, I'm going to jizz if I see a couple of Maelstroms because that's the best way to deal with high armor heroes. Not a Desolator. Not a Desolator. Get a Maelstrom. Yeah, you basically, go, you kind of just bypass most of the armor with your chain lightning. And I guess what? The Lycan Wolf can work it out. He can do it because he has really fast attack speed. He's got a Vlad's for lifesteal. A, a fanboy could hope. A fanboy could hope. As you see right now, Beastmaster and his teammates kind of coming into mid lane, just you know, pulling down wards because they can. They have that gem really nicely done. <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of EXP on the top lane not getting uh, leashed down. Let me check how everything's doing. Everyone's doing the level 13, 11, 9, 13, and 9. The supports are falling behind us. We see a level 10 CM, and uh, I guess it's the CH was the support level 12 support. Uh, so yeah, Scourge leading in terms of EXP as you would expect being up by 7 kills. In terms of towers, they have only lost 1, meanwhile Scourge have lost 4. So Nirvana China on the verge of knocked out, being knocked out on uh, Fun Golden League. But let's see if how how CK, how much CK could carry against this against this Lycanthrope. As we see an entire smoke gang going to find someone in the bot lane. Fortunately for them, no one in the bot lane, no one even near in the bot jungle. Maybe they're going to find this Broodmother. Broodmother does have the BKB, so they got to chain some him down. Or oh, he's going to be fine. He's got a very, oh, he's only got 12 armor. So he's, he's pretty weak in that regard as well. And here we go, Scourge. Uh, we have Mecha finish on the Windrunner, also the Staff of Wizardry. Standard item on the Lycanthrope, again standard tanky item on the Beastmaster. CM's got the urn, and she's rather farm for support. Does, does the Sentinel support have urns and then such? There's a Headdress, and that's it. And just by comparing the farm on the two supports, you can see that with the Mecha and Four Staff almost being finished on the Windrunner, and the fact that there's a CM carrying an urn, yeah, the security supports are a lot, a lot more uh, rich, richer, rich compared to the Sentinel support. And uh, not looking good for Sentinel right now. They're, they're starting to get a little bit choked upon. They can't really farm too much. I, I sh Man, I, I really hope I could have just turned on to Surge Vision right now and see what they see because it, it's not much. They have some really... Web they have a lot of webs down, but that's it because all the wards are being plucked off by that Beastmaster gem. And that's why it's such a good build, especially when you pick Beastmaster and get the invisible hero on the enemy team. You get the gem, you get the dual purpose, you get the wards... Uh, cut down first, and then you get the gank. Looks like we have a five-man gank of some sort coming in, being led by King J here. Is he going to go for a very nice item choice here? Go Scepter after a bit booster. Just go for mass tanking. And that Go Scepter is going to be huge. And looks like we're going to have a Lycan. Yes, Lycan going for the Roshan Pit. And they're going to rock it and hook in. If this is a team fight they're going to take, they need to have the Chain Frost being dropped. The two support leading the way. Yes, we are. Oh, the, he blocks the hook. Actually, that's pretty good. They're going to finger him right off the bat. No, they're going to get a kill, though. Do they have Chain Frost? So they need to cast that Chain Frost. That, that Broodmother being a little bit... Oh, huge lack over. I hope, I hope I wasn't lacking everyone as we see. Where's the Chain Frost? Chain Frost still not being dropped right now. And that, and that DK... Still surviving, still tanking right now, and he's gonna stun the Lycan. Lycan gonna go down, I think. No, Lycan still survive. Chain Frost being dropped just for a single hero, and gonna get the kill. Fine, it's worth it, and especially if it's the Lycan drop, and they are winning this team fight here, I presume. As you see, Lion gonna get a little bit clean up duty. Yes, they're gonna kill the Weaver as well. Nice initiation here. What was key in that team fight was they picked off the Beastmaster. 1500 HP is pretty tanky in this stage of the game for the Beastmaster, but not if you're being focused by 5 hero. And uh, they definitely brought down, the, brought down the Beastmaster. And with the Beastmaster down, that was a 3 second roar down the drain, or 3 half seconds now, considering that he's level 11. And of course, um, the tanking force I was mentioning earlier, the Axis, the Aura, cannot be ignored. And the Lycanthrope was just chasing the Lion around, the Frost Armor keeping him alive. And uh, that was good enough. The Lion stayed alive for the entire team fight, so that was a team wide going the other way. So you can see that Nirvana China with good enough positioning with a Chain Frost. Chain Frost wasn't even used, if you had to keep in mind. I'm not too sure why Lich was holding onto that Chain Frost. 
like like a family heirloom or something. But he just wasted, or he didn't waste it. He used it all the way to the end against a sing against a single lycanthrope. Like I, I think could have dropped right in the beginning, just on the lycanthrope, like and that would have accomplished the same result. But due to the the fact that hey, IG Dot is playing on Scourge, and this is why I was saying, you know, should IG Dot be playing on Scourge again? The fact that he's playing on Scourge, they get themselves a free Aegis. If let's say the the situation was flip and IG Dot Y won a team fight, and they were scourged. Like this would not happen. Like so, I, you know, that's the unfairness of Scourge. Just too good in terms of getting that free Aegis for that Lycanthrope. So, I just why, man, freaking happy right now. Uh, they're not that happy. They lost team fight, but they have Aegis themselves. <clears throat> As we see, they are trying to get some mid push going on. Do we have the key ultimates up? Chain Frost down for 40 seconds. DK form down for a minute. Maybe that realized that as well as they are persisting with this push. I think DK is still all right without his DK form, considering that he's not level 16 yet. So it's not, it's like, like oh my god, we don't have DK form. It's still okay. Like he can still fire breath spam, he gets stun. Right. They are not looking for the team fight, just looking for the delay. Yeah, since I was trying to delay this as long as possible, and Scourge is like, okay, we'll just you know get a tower and we'll turn back. We got what we wanted, and uh, Clock has a Vanguard finish. Uh, we have 2k go on the Lycan Wolf. Is the Clock gonna look for something? No, I think. Don't need to be overly aggressive, yeah. As everyone turn back. Let's check out how the farm here. We have 145 farm on the DK. That's that's okay. That's pretty decent. About five minutes for the Dragonite. <clears throat> Still haven't don't know why item is going for. I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be AC. Yeah, AC rush is the case. He's saving up a lot of gold. It could be could be Shiva's guard actually. Shiva's guard not too bad against the Lycanthrope. Uh, lower his attack speed, lower Weaver's attack speed. Ba basically mitigate the Beastmaster aura, and then you, um, you know, you have the AOE slow wouldn't be bad. But I think AC, uh, hard to say. It's hard to say here, because uh, considering you have Frost armor already, do you need the extra slow for that Shiva provides you? You probably want to go for the later game item. But I think both item has its own merit, and I can't really say which one is better than the other. Um, for defensive purposes, which I think Sentinel is what they're doing right now, Shiva might be better. For a little bit more offensive purposes, um, the AC is by far better because not only do you lower the armor here on the heroes, uh, you also lo lose lower armor on creeps and, and towers as well, so it helps your pushing. So, <clears throat> looks like DK is solo pushing. He's, he's looking for that level 16. Level 16 is key for that DK. Basically give you that frost epicenter. It's like actually insane. So he's looking for it. He's, he's got to find it before the next team fight because it's, it's a, such a key ultimate. Broodmother level 14 right now gets a Yasha and I love this item. I love this transition. A lot of people are like, oh, do I go for the fly now? Do I go Orchid now? No, go for the Yasha because mobility is everything basically he's in, under his web he's moving at 522 movement speed now he's able to chase a lot better with that yasha he's able to attack a lot quicker with that yasha and uh, both both of those things he needs uh, of course gives him a little, little bit more armor which he sort of needs as well and so we see sentinel pushing the top lane here dk form not up yet i mean it is up but he doesn't have level 16 dk form so it looks like nirvana china is going to give up yet another tower uh just giving him all these tower without putting up a fight I wonder what's are they waiting for some key items or are they waiting for that level 16 is that why they're not fighting but that level 16 is not going to come anytime soon even if they give up that tower so they're going to just try to defend their base everyone has TP squirrels I presume yes they do they should be all going back to base at this point sentinel a scourge excuse me not not being shy and sieging that tower I should that why maybe remembering what the success they had in, in the last game where they just pushed relentlessly with that with that like and throw up looks like heart is going to be finished nope not yet um, <clears throat> fairly close, I presume. Beastmaster has a gem. Four staff. All right, this is nice. Four staff Beastmaster for the roar. Can't get really get the blink because he's not farming all too well. Uh, but here we go, Lycan Wolf in position here. And I think what the Beastmaster is looking for is Lich in the back lines. And the, yeah, he's he's got the Aegis, so he doesn't really care. The Wolf trying to lower the armor value of of. <laughs> look look at this DK. Yo, bro, don't even trip. He says. Yeah, what Beastmaster is looking for is either the Lion or the Lich. Because if you can open the team fight by roaring these two, you should be fine. Unfortunately, though, that's where the downside of the Force Staff is. The initiate range, initiation range is really low, but looks like the tower is being sieged, right? Beastmaster going to come in with the roar. He's going to get the roar on the Lion. Are they going to all focus fire on the Lion? Lion very, very low. Chain Frost is being dropped. Force Staff him out, trying to force Staff him out of the cliff. Looks like that Chain Frost doing an insane amount of damage to the Sentinel. It looks like the DK, oh, very low. In fact, he's so, so low. Nice Shackle Shot against uh, the true hero, but unfortunately, DK still 
position of right click and it looks like his DK might be in trouble. Lycan will finally goes down. CM drops a chain frost down the hill and here comes Lycan respawning. He's going to right click and actually is he going to be okay? Um, he's not that tanky at this point. DK very very tanky. DK needs to run at this point and while wow, Lycan half HP he's going to get stunned. He's going to get stunned. Where's Nova? They are going to get the kill on Lycan. Yes they are and DK is still in position with 200 HP. He's not even turning back because he know his armor value is high enough and defend successfully done as we see now crystal maybe in trouble we have dragon tail being dropped off yes we do and there's like one more kill and now the lich uh, excuse me the windrunner might be in trouble yes the windrunner gonna get surrounded by three or four three or four and oh no web 522 movements we go 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 but women are really fast as well she has a four staff she has mecha she's gonna be fine so nice team fights from the from the sentinel really really nice team fight uh bringing out the ages from the lycanthrope and this DK starting to look a little bit scary. You can see that that was just level 2 DK form, so it didn't have that frostiness. Um, he didn't have any item, just a plate mail, vanguard, and cloak. And he was tanking like a champ. He was not tanking Lycan, just put that in perspective. Frost armor plus not Hydro. Maybe that's why they just picked a high armor hero to tank the Lycan, and it's working out nicely. He's got. He just spent a whole bunch of gold, and I. Yeah, Shivas? No, AC. Yes, AC. And dude, this is 33 armor without the frost armor, so it's gonna put him around to 40 armor. He's got 2k HP with a vanguard, that's a lot of block damage as well. So, if he picks up a heart right now, I gotta say he's almost unkillable. Like, really. So, what 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 are you gonna do if you're IG that wide? Maelstrom, guys, pick up Maelstrom, because again, the lightning goes through armor, but uh, or attack speed that that will go through, you know. Just don't get that Slater, because that's not the answer. That's really not the answer. <clears throat> they, and of course, they already have Medallion Courage. You don't, you don't want that Slater anyways. But um, we'll have to wait and see. As we see uh, Windrunner farming some creeps up top. Let's get a, get a CS check again. We have Beastmaster 87, uh, 74 on... How do you have... A I'm confused! Everyone on around 80, around 70 CS, but of course, uh, Lycanthrow has a whole bunch of creep kills. Beastmaster is actually leading creep kills on the team, but, but 176 on the TK, 121 on the Broodmother, 96 on the Clockwork. I gotta say, the farm distribution, I like it a little bit more on Sentinel. And uh, this DK starting to look like he's getting out of control. Up to almost 200 creep, uh, creep kills. And guess what? There was no bottle crawling done. Oh! Philippine Dota players, I love you. I really love you, but yeah. Okay, let's let's leave it at that. This, this is not gonna get any better. Not gonna get any better. Uh, so you see, uh, DK, he's got hundred, a thousand seven hundred gold in the bank. I think what he should be doing with his gold right now is save it for buyback. Don't don't spend it. There's no really no reason to spend it. You fought a really nice team fight with just a play mail. So you could you could fight a even better team fight with the AC. There's really no reason to go for a next upgrade of item. It is in fact a lot worse if your DK somehow, just somehow, dies and have no buyback and just lose the game right then and there. Again, this is a final game for Nirvana China if they lose this. In fact, final game for IG.Y if they lose this. IG.Y still in a commanding position and you see that Equilibrium is mostly being pushed off to the Sentinel end. That is going to allow them to get Roshan advantages. That's going to allow them to get tower advantage. In terms of tower advantage, up by four towers. But only if they prevent the Sentinel from, push, from pushing. I think, I think right now Sentinel is just about one tier four item away from the DK, from them from going fully offensive. And when DK goes offensive, Frost and Percenter on your towers, dangerous stuff. Dangerous stuff. <clears throat> So what Sentinel should be doing right now is ward up. Be very careful of those smoke gang because you can't ward against those. And uh, you know, just stay back. Be very, very turdily. And go for some late game. Go for some late game. Here we go. Like and Wolf pushing the bottom lane here. Well, he does have the Reaver and how much goes. Guys, I'm pretty sure he's got the heart finish. Um, psh, no vid boosters just yet. No recipe. So not even heart yet. So the heart was severely delayed after the last team fight. Beastmaster, nothing yet. He's got a thousand go in the bank. Only fifteen hundred go HP. And I say only fifteen hundred HP. I think like thirty five minutes in. You think? I think uh, the Beastmaster should have a little bit more. Uh, if you have gotten a Necro 3 or a Vanguard Pipe, would have got a little bit more HP. Unfortunately, he has gotten for a lot more utility. <clears throat> Looks like... Uh, I saw a Vip Booster just... Yeah, Vip Booster Pipe on the Weaver. <clears throat> Still not nowhere near his Radiance. He's only got 1700 gold. I, I actually think he's not... 
this is not a carry reaver. It's not played as a carry reaver. It's not farmed as a carry reaver. And that's why that everyone else has like basically 70 CS and the weaver, you know, also has 70 CS. So 80 now. All right. What we do 36 minutes in 80, 36 CS. So they're playing, playing weaver as like a, like a utility hero. I, I guess, I guess that's okay. But uh, here we go. DK 2700 go already poking his head out a little bit. Again, he's he's basically gonna farm his way up to 5k go maybe, and then before he picks up an item, you always want to have an, uh, enough gold to basically pick up an item and save for buyback. <clears throat> and I think I think that's the case here. That's what he's gonna do. Uh, the entire Sentinel team running around the Roshan has spawned. So team uh, map control is everything at this point here. Hawk is up for the Scourge team to kind of scout around. Of course, you have rockets for the Sentinel. And if they kill the hawk, kill this hawk with the fire breath, very very important. <coughs> Now we gotta keep in mind that how the last Roshan Team 5 went for the Sentinel. If they had a really hook in, they initiate, they could easily get for the kill. Of course, Sentinel cannot go for the Roshan. They don't have the DPS. They have a very tanky Dragonite. But that's all he could do. He tanks. And uh, he can't really do too much. A lot of scouting being done for the Spiderlings. And uh, <clears throat> here we go. Do we have any smokes up? We have four staff, two four staff on the Scourge Team. They are not gonna smoke up just right now. Uh, Heart is finished on the Lycan Wolf. <clears throat> And that just might make a huge difference in this team fight. BKP Heart Lycan, insane amount of damage output, and insane amount of tanking, and he's gonna just show his face, walk it straight into Roche Pit. Don't even care at this point. Um, there's no wards up for Sentinel, but it's very easy for Sentinel to scout it out. All they have to do is send a Spiderling in for two, or just a rocket. And now they notice, ooh, Roshan is a half HP. Should we fight? Should we stop fighting? Uh, do you want to hook in is the question here? Because if you hook in, you're probably not gonna get the Lycan kill. In fact, you're probably gonna get your own clock killed. And I do believe the Sentinel realized that as well, so they're gonna just nothing they really could do, and they just have to give up the free ages. In fact, they should just turn back right about now, unless the clock hook in and go for a Roshan Steel, Aegis Steel. Uh, and again, a lot of scouting being done by these Spiderlings. Here we go. DK runs in right now. Hook misses again. That was um, some Chinese hook too short right now. Shackle shot and Roar goes on the Broodmother. And he's losing HP so rapidly. He's got... Oh no, he's not life-stealing enough. Back to Evasion! Evasion! Being bossed right now. He's still alive. He's life-stealing back all the way to full HP. Oh my goodness. And looks like Frost Epicenter is being dropped on. No, they're going to ignore it altogether. Lion in a little bit of trouble. Here comes a DK though. Uh, Roshan's still up. I think they should just turn back for the Roshan. Yes, YYF got brought down. I completely cannot believe it. He had heart. And L was literally one hit away from death, but it was Butterfly Evasion. It was insane amount of lifesteal. And hey, call it luck or whatever you want to call it, but it was it was DK going home with the cheese and Broodmother going home with the Aegis. This game, just turn it around, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta say, this game is... Is it over? I think it's over. Too early to say, 12 to 14, but DK right now could get his next item, butterfly finish on that Broodmother. Wow, that was a gutsy buy because he bought the Broodmother, uh, if he bought the butterfly and he, he was chained something like that in that team fight and he died if like the evasion didn't proc his way, they would have lost the team fight and they would have lost the Rax for sure because, I mean, like in with Aegis pushing your base, like you're going to lose Rax. So that ultimately worked out, but I, I want to. I want to let the viewers know how ballsy that move was. There was no buyback on that on that uh, Broodmother, and even if DK bought back, he wouldn't have DK form. That's that's an important thing to consider as well. So that's a, that's a different hero. So um, really, really ballsy play from Sentinel, and they went in after missing a hook as well. Again, King J, you know, too short as expected. So you know, nothing nothing you can say about that. As we see, a couple of gold on DK gonna be a crystalless. <laughs> Nice! He's like, okay, I need to do some damage, guys. Alright, damage time. Gonna pick up crits. And crits it will be. As he's gonna be critting some frost epicenters. Lion playing a pretty decent game. Um, tanking it up. I think he should should offer Ghost Scepter. I think that should be his next item choice. Here we go. DK versus Tower. He ain't back drawing if it's, he hits me first. So, of course, Tower did hit him first. So, he's self-defending right now against that Tower. And that Tower says, oops. A little bit of trouble right now as we see what what's the armor value of this 42 armor it is absolutely insane and uh, he, he's basically running in sea king says f yeah sea king and the entire scourge base is breached i can't like i i'm just a little bit confused because like this is lycan's game 
this is Lycan's game, but now he's in trouble. Lycan trying to do some backstab. Uh, he can still hurt. Let's not let's not forget about it right now. But Frost Armor is removing a lot of that. Evasion is moving a lot of that. Ghost Scepter is moving a lot of that. As soon as they get Force Staff on the line or Ghost Scepter on the line or on the Lich, and they're going to be in trouble. DK tanking everything up, and he's going to walk in. He's going to pop his DK form. No, no need to cheat it right now. He's got the cheese. He's probably going to use it in just a little bit later if he needs to. And here we go. Shackle Shot missing. And right now, DK with this 40 armor, 42 armor. Here's the rule right now. Are they going to shackle right here? He pop the cheese, pop the cheese, he pop the cheese. And it's going to turn. Oh, no. He's actually using. Oh, he pops the DA form as well. And he does die. He's not that ballsy because Lycans can still right him. Chain Frost being tanked by a lot of creeps. And this team fight might just turn around. Yes, once again. As you see, people from both teams dying left and right. Bruma, they're doing a lot of right click. Unfortunately, he's getting right click down as well. CM uh, revealing him with that. Uh, Freeze by but looks like to have buybacks. Looks like DK has buybacks as well, but unfortunately, nowhere to TP to this. The Sentry War being dropped down. He's going to get complete chains down. As we see, Broomrider trying to run out. He's a half HP. There's a there's the uh, freeze, and where's oh, he's trying to run out. He's trying to run out. No like in the fight anymore, and he's basically one power shot away from death. And one more like one right click. There we go. We have Scourge winning that team fight. Uh, we have the two carries of the Sentinel buying back, and I'm not too sure whether that buyback was necessary because you know that YYF isn't buying back. Not that he had to go to buyback, but I'm not too sure whether these buybacks were necessary. Maybe he could have waited for these guys to push and then you buy back. But that was a good team fight one for the skirt team. So I, I it's so hard to call it's too hard to call it. DK was very tanky, but maybe not tanky enough. Because he had the cheese at that point as well, and Brewmother had the Aegis, but they still lost the team fight. So both teams cannot go on the offensive. Both teams really a lot better defending, it seems. So all right, I guess we're gonna see, sit here for 40 more minutes and watch both teams uh, turn up to eight tier four items. Because in terms of how these games go, the only deciding team fight is gonna be at a Roche team fight. Uh, because whoever wins the Roche team fight is gonna be so close to the enemy base, and the extra lives of the of the Aegis and Cheese, pretty important. Even though it didn't matter too much in these fights, because DK again died. Twice, really nice shackle shot, and they are gonna get a decision this later. I again, this is the wrong way to go about it. Mechanically, mathematically, this is the wrong way to go about it. Of course, Stygian Desolators will increase the DPS for your friendly heroes as well. And considering that they do have the Beastmaster Aura, they do have the uh, they do have both the Stygian Desolator and the Lycans, uh, what you call it, Medallion Courage. You could get a lot of attack speeds in a lot quickly, very quickly, and that can bring the DK down. But as the game goes on, drags on longer and longer and longer, um, and looks like it will, um, Minus Armor gets more and more ineffective. I think getting attack speed or getting magical damage is better. Um, again, mathematically, not just my opinion. So, definitely did the math to figure that one out. Okay, it looks like they're going to do a smoke the C2. Get something going. Going to tail this war first. Smoke, smoke. No smoke just yet. A lot of force staff, force staff picked up on the Crystal Maiden as well. That's that's gonna hurt the Broodmother very much, much so because if the Broodmother can't can attack, she can't life steal, and that's gonna be absolute key. So Broodmother effectiveness is running out. Uh, again, one of the one of the thing about Broodmother that seven seven one one five and I agreed on, and again seven one five is like carry player from uh, DCCom Dota. Is that Brumada gives you 40 minutes, about just 40 minutes, because after 40 minutes or so, they're gonna be have Ghost Scepter on the other end, they're gonna have Force Staff, Force Scepter, Force Staff on the other end, and Brumada has a hero as a melee right click hero. Even if you get movement speed on her, such as uh, Yasha, you're gonna get outsped, uh, you're gonna get outran, and unfortunately, it is approaching that stage for the Brumada. Brumada is gonna work on the Mantis style next because that Freeze Bite is ever so annoying, and uh, having Brumada Illusion in the fight, not bad. DK right now still holding to a talisman evasion. I love this. He's I'm not too sure whether he's going to finish the butterfly altogether. It won't be bad. Uh, but that 25% evasion is going to be absolutely key. 40, what, 43 armor, 25% evasion, damage block, what, 10 HP regen per second. Like, this is probably the best tank you get. And you got to attack him too because he's got frost app centers and they're critting. So this is like the perfect tank, but can the perfect tank tank against Lycan and Stygian is the question. Because, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Lycan throw, he does have a thousand gold in his bank. I assume he has something on his crow. No, just smuggled to see, so maybe save him for buyback at this point. I wonder what he's bought. I don't think he's got any new item for a long time. Uh, both teams, very tense moment, jungling it up. Uh... 
gonna check out gold level 2600 gold on that clockwork I think he's gonna go for Shiva's very close to it if he decides to do so but again no buyback if he does um, let's see and that's pretty much it from in terms of sense on this farm scourge pretty much the same thing not too high on the gold looks like we have an MKB attempt on Sherrigan 2000 go up on the on Tron. I think Tron is saving for heart at this point. Vanguard is definitely not worth it. Maybe he'll go for AC. That would help the team very much so as well. But I think AC would be a little bit better off on Lycanthrope because the focus fire generally goes on Lycan. So I think heart on, on uh, Beastmaster wouldn't be bad as we see something on the Secret Shop. Nope, just a TP throw. So we're, we're, we're going down to the stage where everyone's farming and now we do have the Shiva's finish. And Shiva's matters quite a bit against a fast attack speed. Um, again, giving himself a little bit more armor. It, it is all up to Lich to cast Frost Armor up on everyone. It's so vital because, again, look look at how much plus armor he has and how much base armor he has. So right now, plus armor with the, all the auras and everything. I actually would just get a, a Basadius. I'm not even joking. I would get a late game Basadius like this. No, they have Vlads. Never mind. Kidding. Slow. <laughs> okay, I'm done. If they didn't have a Vlads, I would get a Basadius because, again, every little bit helps. And really, on the line, it, it doesn't matter. If you have a bracer, but say this, if you get focused, you're gonna die either way. The extra bracer wouldn't help. So, um, if if buckler and mecha would have stacked, I would have get a buckler as well. I used to stack not anymore. Um, so just thinking of all these ways to increase uh, your armor values. And normally I wouldn't, you know, make a big big deal about armor values, but it it, it is a big deal this game against Sijin, against. Uh, I guess what you can call it. Here we go. We're gonna try it one more time. DK props the frost. He's tick he's about at 80% HP. He's taking some damage. He's gonna turn back and maybe regen up a little bit. Use light his range a little bit better. And here we go. The top tower. The mid tower is gonna get breached. It's gonna take so much damage. Yes, the tower is gonna go down. They're gonna again slow roll this. No reason to get shackle shot two together. Uh, they really need strong counter ganking coming in. DK still regening up slowly, but. It's Kind of a difficult position for them to take the racks because there's a bite on him right now. Here we go, Broodmother in position. There's there's a Shiva that gets nice to Mancog, and is that DK gonna right click? He's gonna get uh, there's one kill on the Windrunner. That's huge. No more Stygian right in the fight. Does he buy back? It looks like he doesn't have buy back. DK uh, like a wolf. He does buy back. Never mind. Windrunner in position right now. The line gets hex on him, and actually this wolf might be in trouble. Impale misses. Click on him, bro. As we see DK in complete trouble. That shackle shot on on the DK, and as we see Crystal Maiden drops. Oh, it looks like Crystal Maiden is gonna go. Up. The DK did go down as well, and keep in mind that re reinforcement lines of the Scourge is a lot shorter. As we see, Broom on the right kicks down, like a throw, like until bites back, and this is Q for the Scourge to back the hell up. They cannot lose the Broom under right now. It looks like he is going to back up right now. This is it's okay. I, I, actually, the uh oh, the, the Weaver in the entire position, everyone ignored him. He pops the Ghost Scepter, but he he's basically going to be dead. And it looks like the Brood Mother might be dead as well. He gets war if he gets Shaco, he's going to be in complete trouble. It looks like he's going to just run in a complete different direction. As the Clockwork goes down, do we have buyback from DK? Is the question. We don't have. No, DK already bought back. Okay, what am I saying? He's he's right here. He's right here. Gave me a scare because if DK didn't have buyback, the game was done. Keep in mind that DK form is still down for 21 seconds. DK, believe it or not, not tanky enough. And it looks like the, the fourth Roshan is up again, and this is turning out to be a really, really epic game. Roshan, uh, uh, excuse me, Clockwork buys back both the DK and the Brood Mother in position. Here comes Lich at half HP. He could pop the Mega for some heal, but he's running low in terms of mana, so he's gonna eat a creep. And here comes the Lion as well. Lion is just instrumental in these fights. And then we have the Roshan at half HP. Clockwork not in position. The Aegis is gonna end up on the Scourge. And uh oh, there's a roar on the brood mother. What are you doing, B? Oh my gosh, Shaco shot on him as well. And the CK in position, do something. There's a chain frost, but that's just only for the slow at this point right now. It looks like uh, the Beastmaster is going to end up going down. Yes, he is going to end up going down right now. But like, while well, Cog on his own hero trying to focus on Weaver, Weaver gets hexed. Weaver's going to go down. Where's the finger of death? There's nice chains on Weaver's going to go down, but he has an Aegis, no, no big deal. And now Lycan like Wolf, Wolf form is out, but he has hex, or he, he has heart, so he's regening so much. And it looks like it is going to be the Scourge team, IG.Y, clean. In and out late game, it's just too much like in Weaver, too much chase. Shackle Shot was all over the place this game. CH, beautiful, be beautiful winner in play. And looks like he is gonna get, get this DK down as well. And that was the game. That was the game. This this was a roller coaster ride. Scourge, man, had, had a. It was like, what? DK winning team fights? It, it was really, really close at one point in the game. But what turned it around was this mid game team fight where there was cheese on DK, there was Aegis on the Broodmother, but nice amount of item choices on the Scourge supports to dodge around the Broodmother in the whole fight, and good Shackle Shot. Those Shackles were just money, money Shackle Shots. 
Uh, CA Shack. I, I thought it's going to be YYF Shackle Shot, but apparently it's CA Shackle Shot. Chain Frost dropped, and they are just going to tank that one up because they have, you know, they have a lot of region. They they have. Oh man, a little bit sad. I was hoping that DK would would win a game, but it looks like it was not meant to be. But of course, Nirvana China not going to GG yet. Going to play it to the bitter end. They might have a chance to come back if they get everyone out of position, but. That's a big if. Um, they're down two racks and it's not looking too good. And again, Broommother is one of those heroes that give you 40 minutes. He's he's 10 minutes overdue. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't get better. It doesn't get any better than this. DK just don't do enough damage at this point. He, In fact, he has to run. Um, if Let's say if he does, like, 300 damage at this point, he could feasibly get BKB on lifesteal and just try to hard carry this back. But that's not even the case. He, he lacks damage. He lacks life steal right now, and he lacks a magical immunity, and that's that's all the stuff that's killing him at this point. Did I say earlier BKB wouldn't help? I take that back because apparently you gotta get BKB against CH, or else he just he will just get four second stuns on you all over the fight. So beast, <laughs> look at beast mass. That's that's pretty sick. Right now, I feel like it's the mostly formality. Forty Scourge just gonna get their next item set. Don't get greedy though. You guys, did you guys watch that game? Uh, we versus Nirvana China. If you haven't watched that one, it is it is on Twitch TV. Dotacommentaries.com. Watch it. Find that one and watch it. And and in that game you will understand game one and game three. In those games you will understand why what I mean by don't get greedy because the game could always sing around. You never ever know. Looks like Sentinel is going for a Hail Mary push, the last push on the mid lane. We have a haste screen on the DK. Not that it matters because he's going to get chased on anyways. I think Sentinel should spend all the go. Yeah, they they basically spent all the go. No one has buyback at this point uh, because they know they lose. If they lose this one more fight, it's, it's over. If they don't win the game right now, it's over. Again, I commend the fact that Nirvana China, despite losing two racks, they're going to try something here. A lot of teams just going to basically wait uh, and then die. But right now, going to fight it out as we see. Clockwork, uncharacteristically very tanky, but is he tank enough as we see? Let's see how good these shackle shots are from CH. CH still has that, CH still have the cheese, so. Very tense moment, is DK gonna pop his DK form? DK also smoked up as well, entire central team smoke up, except with the clock pushing in the front right now. They, they want to have the scourge team initiate on the clock, cause clock, at this point, doesn't do enough damage anyways. Um, you know, he, he's just a tanky force, and uh, Unfortunately, he pushed too slow by himself against these big creeps. So these guys would like to stay under the cloak of the smoke. But both teams sending illusions, sending in, you know, guys to right-click. You know, <clears throat> did he just sell his? He was going for divine. I just he was going for the divine. Here we go. Clock Hogan gets the weaver. That's probably the worst choice you could get. And there's a four staff out. Where's the DK? DK, who is he focusing? There's a finger of death. He's gonna time lapse out. He's gonna be absolutely fine. This team fight right off to a bad start for DK. Work here comes a brood mother right clicking. Crystal Maiden dropping an elf. They're gonna just kill off the Crystal Maiden very quickly. Actually, she's very tanky at this point. Survives for a long, long time. Looks like that's the first kill. As we see, Weaver finally goes out as well. Weaver buys back. He's gonna pick up his. Uh, Divine right now. I think he's gonna pick up his divine right now. As we see, uh oh, Seeking goes. Uh, Seeking the Lycan drop goes down. He's gonna buy back as well. As we see, two buyback. Where's the divine? Still no divine right now. And the shackle shot again on two hero, but DK not being focused. Frost epicenter being dropped. Weaver goes down one more time. This team fight is gonna turn around as we see Lycan throw getting focused upon. That is the second buyback. No more buyback. Is he gonna go down? Rocket hook. Oh, yes, he's gonna get the kill. They're gonna go for mid racks. All the trees are breached. They gotta send one person TP back. They're gonna go for the straight throne. I'm guessing they just go for the throne, guys. Nirvana China just go. Yes, they are going for the throne. One person need TP back. Looks like it's gonna be a lion, but the tree is under breach. Are we we're gonna have base race. We are gonna have base race, but no, they don't do enough damage. Lion unable to defend. In fact, he's if a 10 HP, he's gonna buy self and heal up. But the top racks, they are gonna get mega creeps just on the creeps to get pushed. But don't throw under huge amount of focus. I was just seeking in position. We have three heroes dead. Crystal Minute is back. Uh, we have Shackle Shot by Clockwork staying in front of tower. It looks like the Scourge is gonna do it. We have a buyback who's teeping in. It is gonna be double BOTs. Yes, double POTs, and they're gonna go for base race. My guy, Crystal Maiden. And and, dude, this is going to be absolutely close. And looks like it is Sentinel. Gonna get the Vic. Oh my god. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this replay, yo. Wow. What what did I say five minutes ago? Don't give up. Just okay. No, that's not what I said. I said okay. This is the formality. I just thought why it's gonna win now. Wow. Okay, so what was what was the deal with Weaver? He had a he. I saw he had a demon edge, and then he had an Aegis on him. I was like, okay, well, he's probably either going for MKB. And then I saw the Sacred Relic later. I was like, okay, he doesn't have the Aegis anymore. He probably dropped the Demon Edge, and then he's gonna wait wait for the next Aegis to get both Aegis and and the Divine Rapier. That's why he dropped his Demon Edge. That's why I was saying, oh, he has Divine now. He's a Divine now. He's he's gonna buy back and and pick up the Divine and go fight. But well, never mind what I just said about the divine. Holy shoot, that's a. Okay, I'm gonna shut down the stream. Thank you guys for watching this intense, intense game. Wow. Whew. Okay, just a little bit of a shameless advertisement. I'm a commentator from YouTube and DotaCommentators.com. If you like to watch more commentaries from me, I suggest you go check me out on YouTube. You can search Luminous. Luminous on YouTube and you will find my channel so a lot of stuff I do a weekly news show I am on a beta keys giveaway spree uh, I've been giving away one beta key each and every week and I think I just got myself on a whole bunch of beta keys oh, so I'm gonna give away I think three beta keys every week a little bit more information on that later on um, and of course I do commentaries that do have a lot of how about pub games here and there? So, yep, check me out on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoy this insane game and the commentary along with it as well. I'm gonna shut down stream, but I will be right back. And I just want to chat with the viewers because that game was mind blowing. It was literally mind blowing. So, I'll, I'll reset the stream and I'll be back.